All right, so we're going to use OSL now. Just to go over what OSL is, this is a video from Autodesk, and Zap Anderson is actually talking about OSL and what it is, and Zap's a legend. Um, but here, OSL is just open shading language, and it's an open source project governed by Sony Pictures, Imageworks, Leaders, Larry Gritz. And in 3DS Max 2019, you've got a new map, OSL map, and a new map category called OSL, and some OSL development tools. Now, OSL's been around for a little while, and that they've decided to put it into Max 2019 is amazing, and you'll be able to do some awesome things with this. Um, but if you don't have Max 2019, like I have Max 2018, that's what we're using in the office right now, um, then you don't have access to this, but you can still use an OSL map and you can still create some things and get them in there. And Chaos Group has released this, uh, I believe Vlado released it a couple of years ago now. Um, but here, let's take a look. On the Chaos Group website, you have this complex for now shader. And here, they tell you what you need to know. So it, it takes a little bit to get your head around it. So I'm just going to show you how to get your head around it quickly so you can get up and running and use it straight away. So first of all, just to go over the overview, this shader can be used to render materials with complex index of refraction. Okay, basically metals um, and other, subject, other things. But here, I'm going to cover metals. The regular viewing material can compute the Fresnel effect for dielectric materials. Now, dielectric is something which doesn't conduct electricity very well. So if it does conduct electricity well, then it's not a dielectric material. Okay. So the viewing material is set up for plastics, for glass, for things like that, things which are, are dielectric materials. It's not set up for metals. Uh, metals have a more complicated Fresnel reflective curve that depend also on another parameter. Okay, I'm not going to go into what this is right now, but what you need to know is that the o, the OSL, this shader parameter, will do this for you. Okay, so it can it can work this out and it can do it correctly. Now, if you click here, this shader file can be found here. You need to get this open. Okay, and then you need to grab this, and what you need to do. Okay, you need to get into your program files, you need to get into Autodesk, 3ds Max, whatever version you have, and just create another uh, folder here, just right click and you can say new folder, and I've created one and I called it OSL. Okay, and then you take this and just drag it into there, just drag and drop. And that will put it in there. Now you can use it. So basically for your materials, just grab a Vero material and I'm going to click on here and I'm going to click on this to show the shaded material in viewport. And we're just going to assign it to the ball here. Okay, so basic traditional steel. Uh, old school, you just click on diffuse, make this black. And then reflection, just bring that all the way up. Turn off Fresnel reflections. We're going to reduce this a bit. And I'm going to bring down this glossiness and I'll bring it down to about 0.6, I guess. And this we'll just call steel. You can use your anisotropy, which is right here. We'll set it at about uh, 0.4. And then you can rotate this as well. You can just go around, and this is just the angle. You know, where do you want it rotated to? So uh, I'll set it about, yeah, 46 is fine. So what you're going to do when you're creating the material is if you go into in V-Ray, okay, if you look here under your V-Ray maps, you've got V-Ray OSL text. Now, you also have it in a material here, V-Ray OSL material. But if you double click on this material, all you'll be able to do, like, these are, there's very little difference here. So, you can do some things with this, but really, you're going to be using this and plugging this into the reflection slot. Now, right now, it's just gone black because it doesn't have a clue what's happening and what this is and what it's supposed to be doing. So, first of all, you need to find, tell it where that OSL shader is. So, you're going to click here and just navigate to it. And here it is, OSL, and just like that. Okay, now immediately you can see it starts to know what's happening here and what to do. So, you know, for steel, well, you have these parameters down here, right? Now for steel, really you're gonna be using the same parameters all the way along, so 
So steel is an alloy and it's often created from iron and it's other items are added in like carbon is added in, you get carbon steel. So they add various different elements together to create steel. It's not an element in its own. As it isn't an element in its own, it won't be in here. It won't be in, you know, oh, let's see, silver. You know, these are the elements, argon. It's not going to be here as an element. It's not going to be gold or something else. So you have to, you know, pretty much take one of these and go to Fe. Where are you? Iron. And what we'll do is you come in here and look, even though you could say scientifically, what is iron, right? This is from this book by Johnson and Christie. And these guys in 1974 looked this over and they went, this is what we think iron is. This is how it's made up. Scientifically, this is how it's composed. Someone else did it in 2009, someone else in 1985, someone else in 1985. So you have these, all this different data from these different people. And these are different scientists. And it's not an absolute of how iron or steel is created. These metals aren't absolutes. A nugget of gold and look at another nugget of gold, there's liable to be slight differences. If you look at iron from one place and another place, there's liable to be slight differences. So you need to be weary of this and know that these are not absolute amounts. You can absolutely change these slightly, okay? Um, and we're not trying to get something perfect in Max. We're just trying to get something which works. So we're going to use this. And if you look on this website here, he tells you the wavelengths for red, green, and blue are 65, 55, and 45. So based on that, we can come in here and we can go 65. Just add it in here, wavelength. And that tells you the N and the K. So that one, control C. And then the K, control C, control V. And then let's get the wavelength for 55. Control C, just put it in here, control V. Get this wavelength. And then come in here and do 45. Put it in there. Put this in here. And that gives you iron. You know, if you render this, just to take a look at the iron. Right, so that's iron, and that's a nice good iron. Now, if I want steel, what I'm going to do is 2.9. See, these are pretty close. 2.9, 2.9, 2.5. So I'm going to make this 0, 0, and oops. There. And I'm going to push this back up. Now, if I want this to be exactly the same, what I'd probably do is just make that 9, make that exactly the same, and that exactly the same. Uh, and we can actually get this closer, because this blue here is quite a bit off from that 9. So let's make that 8. And some of that blue should disappear. So that's how I'd create steel using OSL texture. And make this A. Now, if I want to have no color in there, I would just literally take this and just copy it here. And then just make this like three, three, three. And then if you take a look, Now the reason we still have color in here is because this here is the same is got a different fall off here on these different colors. So you make these all the same here, and then what you have is the color isn't going to change on the fall off there on each of the colors. Okay, and that's how I'd create steel using an OSL shader.